Hello, I'm Andrew Fryer, and in part four of my series on running SQL Server on Windows Server Core, I want to talk about some of the other ways you can install SQL Server that make it more appropriate for use in a large data center. And specifically what you can do with SQL Server in any uh, installation of Windows Server is to partially install the product in such a way that you can then sysprep the machine and complete the installation later. So let's have a look at the command line to do this type of installation. I've broken it out into separate lines here to make it easier to read. So we're going to prepare the image, we're going to install these features. Notice this says instance ID, not instance name here. The instance ID is just a, a random identifier. And finally we just have to accept the license terms. I'm just going to take the single line of that, copy it to my clipboard, go over to my command line here, swap out to where the SQL Server media is and run that setup command. So that process has now complete and if I go to the C drive and look at the files we can see that Microsoft SQL Server is now in there and the usual set of directories are in place. However, SQL Server isn't properly installed. But what I can do now is sysprep this machine and then use it as a template to make lots more copies of it. If you haven't seen sysprep before, we need to go back to Windows, System32, sysprep, and run sysprep. And I'm just going to shut it down. Now that machine has been sysprepped, it's completely forgotten that it belongs to a domain, but it's still got that partial installation of SQL Server on it. And you can see this when I spin it up. You get this familiar screen, you will have seen the first time you installed any operating system in the Windows family. Fortunately, it still remembered the local administrator password. The first thing I want to do is to join this to a domain again. And I use sconfig in part two, so you can watch that if you want to. But for now, I'm just assume I've done it. I'm going to cut the video and then we'll come back to the serious business of installing SQL Server and completing the image that we prepared earlier. And now I'm ready to install SQL Server by completing the image that I prepared earlier. Go to D drive, where my media is, open notepad to bring up my command file. And down at the bottom here, you can see the options to complete the image. So the action is complete image. The instance ID is what I referred to earlier. The instance name is whatever I choose to call it, typically MSSQL server for the first instance, and how you refer to it when making a connection to it. I've then got the service account, the sysadmin account, the agent account, accept the license terms and turn on TCP so that we can connect to this remotely. I've got all that in one line here. So you can just paste that in and off we go. And that process has completed. And if we look at the services here, we can see our old friend SQL Server is running away. If I mount my configuration disk, We can see that the machine is called Denali Core 2. And just to prove it's all working, if I switch over to my Windows 7 machine, and connect to Denali Core 2, there she blows.
So that seemed like a lot of extra work. Why do it? Because that intermediate step where we've cis-prepped the image means that we can take lots and lots of copies of it and then we can fire those up as we need them, complete the installation of SQL Server from the command line and thus clone installations of SQL Server to meet our users' business needs.